in Final Cut Pro using the object tracker, we're gonna create this Mr. Who's the Boss text. So I've gone ahead and brought the footage into Final Cut Pro. A large part of this process is just being patient. While it's not the most difficult effect to pull off, it can take a lot of time. Here we are in our project. I'm just gonna go ahead and start finding where I say the first word, which is today. Today, and right there, and we can actually see that in the waveform. I'm gonna push Control T to get a basic title. Now it's gonna be very important that we set up this title how we want the rest of the titles to look. So let's go ahead and go into the text inspector, and I'm gonna go ahead and just write the word today. From there, we can change the font. I'm gonna select Proxima Nova because I believe that's what Mr. Who's the Boss uses. And we can change it from regular over to extra bold. I could even scale it up, but I won't go too crazy with it because we need enough space for all of the words on the side. From there, we'll go ahead and scroll on down till we find the face options and we'll click show. And we're gonna change it from color over to gradient. Once we've selected gradient, we're gonna go down to the gradient options and click on this down arrow. We can select the color here on the left side. And from there, we're just gonna go ahead and select white. On the right side, we'll go ahead and select white again. Then we'll jump into the color wheels and we'll just drop that down a little bit as a gray tone. So now it's got this very subtle gradient happening over the top of it. We can close down the gradient settings and then go down to the outline options. We're gonna go ahead and enable that and then click show. We'll change it from color over to gradient once again. From there, we'll go into the gradient settings. It's gonna give us these blue options. Maybe you like the blue options. If I drag up the width, you can see what the blue options look like. Let's go ahead and change the colors though up a bit. Now I am just gonna to stick to my branding of teal and orange. So I'm gonna select this orange color. We'll go over to the blue options and select teal. So now my title has this really cool looking gradient on the outside. It's got the nice gradient on the inside. We'll go ahead and close down the gradient options there. Then the last setting we're gonna wanna change is the drop shadow. So we'll go ahead and click that checkbox. We'll click show to see the drop shadow and we can adjust the settings according to our taste. I'll get it somewhere in here. We could drag up the blur a little bit, something like that. So you're gonna have a few different options when it comes to moving text around. You could just click and drag directly on the text in your window, and that's a great way to do it, unless you're adding animation to the text. For the sake of adding animation, I'm actually gonna leave it directly in the center, and the reason for that is because that will leave the anchor point directly in the center. What I mean by anchor point is currently, if I scale this down, you'll see how it's shrinking down in the direct center of our object. However, if I click and drag this over to the left side and scale it down, you'll see how it starts shrinking towards the middle. And you can see that if I push Shift T or select my transform tool, the anchor point is right here in the center. So the text is going to shrink based off of where that anchor point is. Now we could click and drag where the anchor point is in our frame if we wanted, but I find it's just easier to line up your text directly in the center just like so, and now all the animations are gonna come from the middle. Now that we've done that, we can push Shift T to get the transform tool once again, and we can click and drag this over into position where we roughly want it. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start adding in some more text layers. So what I'm gonna do is click Option, click and drag, and now we're going to add the next word, which is in. And we can select our transform tool and click and drag this over to the side. And if we hold shift, it's actually gonna keep it on the same plane there. I'm gonna push enter so that the transform tools go away. So now if we push play, today in final, you can see that the text is coming on just as it should. The reason I'm setting this up as separate layers is because we wanna add a lot of kinetic energy to the text, add different animations to each different word. So this is gonna be your best bet for doing just that. Now that I've got today in, we're going to add in the next word and we're just gonna to need to find where each word starts. Today in final, so final starts right here. Push option, click and drag to duplicate that. Then we're gonna write in the word final. With our transform tool, we can go ahead and click and drag this down to the next layer. Now I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. And something you'll notice in Final Cut Pro is that as you're adjusting stuff with these really thick outlines, it actually makes them very thick for a moment before it goes back to its original phase. So just keep that in mind. It's not what the final output's gonna look like. You wanna make sure that you see what the final form of your text is going to look like before you export. Go ahead and add the word cut, and then we'll go ahead and add pro. Today in Final Cut Pro using the object tracker, that's looking really good. 
So let's go ahead and add in some animations to this text so that it really pops. Now I'm going to show you how to do this once without any plugins, but then after that I'm going to use the add motion plugin to really add some nice kinetic energy to this. With our today word selected, we're going to go into the video inspector and find the scaling options. From there, we're going to drag it down to zero. We'll click here to add a keyframe and we'll use the arrow keys to move forward a couple frames. So I'll go ahead and move forward one, two, three, four maybe, and we'll set this to a full 100. So now this text should be popping in today, just like so. Now, if it's a little bit too fast for me, I can actually right click and select show video animation. In here, we'll see the keyframes. I can just click and drag these animation keyframes out today to slow down the animation. So I'm really liking how that looks. Now, maybe I want that same animation across every single word. We could push command C, select all of the other text attributes, command shift V, and select scale. We don't want the position though. We'll push okay. And so now today in Final Cut Pro using all of those text items are going to have that same animation. But I want to be a little bit more creative with my animation. So I'm going to go ahead and use add motion, which is a paid plugin but you can create really kinetic text using just the basic position tools in Final Cut Pro. Add Motion just makes it a whole lot easier. That's why I'm using it for this tutorial. There is a link down below if you wanna pick it up and also I think there's a discount code. This is not sponsored. I just really like the plugin and I just wanted to share it with you. So over here on the right side, I'm gonna click into my effects browser and we can look up Add Motion and we'll just click and apply this onto our in. And from there, if I push play, you'll see how it's actually sliding in a little bit. And so. So I'm going to shorten the duration down to something like 0.5 so it's a little faster and we'll change the takeoff from linear over to something like ease 2. That's looking pretty nice but it's coming from the left side and it's kind of blocking the today word. So I want to adjust this so that it's actually sliding from the top down. So I'm going to select the A point here and drag that straight up. So now if I push play, you can see how that's sliding in really nicely. We could even add a little fade on that in. So I'll push command T to add a transition and we'll shorten that transition up quite a bit. Perfect. And it's not appearing quite as fast as I want it to. So I'm going to select the secondary storyline and I'm going to push comma to push it over by one keyframe here on the timeline. So I adjusted about four or five. Today in Final Cut Pro, perfect. So now we're getting that nice kinetic energy. This is editor Dylan. I was gonna try and show you every single animation for this video, but it was just taking way too long. So if you want more tutorials on how to use add motion, I will link those down below, but we're gonna go ahead and skip on forward to the object tracking portion of this video so that you can get on with your wonderful life. So go ahead and select your main footage. Make sure you're in the video inspector, scroll down to the bottom and find trackers. In here, we'll just click the add option and we'll drag this directly over my face. I'm gonna shrink this down till it's a good shape over my face, just like so. Going to the top left, we can push Analyze. This is going to just really quickly track my face. So now I want all of these text elements to be moving together. And so we are going to use a compound clip. So clicking and dragging over all of your text objects, go ahead and push Option G. That's going to allow you to create a compound clip and we can just call this text. So now all those text objects are inside the compound clip. Let's go ahead and add our tracking data. Selecting the transform tool, you'll see there's the transform and the tracker option. To the right of the tracker is this down arrow. Click that down arrow and find the tracker. Here it says none and we can select the object track. That's the original tracker that we used. So now if I push play, this should be animated to my face. Today in Final Cut Pro using the object tracker. So it's got a very Mr. Who's the Boss look to it. If you don't like that it's rotating off to the side, we can actually go into our transform properties here and find this down arrow. We'll click that and disable rotation. So now the text is only going to track my face, but it's not going to track the rotation. Today in Final Cut Pro using the object tracker, looking really, really nice. So at the risk of this tutorial becoming far too long, that is the basics of how you can create your own Mr. Who's the Boss look using Final Cut Pro. Now it should be noted that all the animations coming in from the left side over to the right and stuff like that can be done using the position tools in Final Cut Pro. But because there is no easing options or just any generic good keyframe options, Come on, Apple. That's why I'm using Add Motion because the animations are so much smoother. It's so much easier to use than adding in keyframes here and there. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.